digital assessment has existed for many years, arguably the first person to type something on Microsoft Word and then print it out and hand it in was doing a digital assessment. Certainly the first person who emailed their Word file was doing a digital assessment. We know that time has moved on and people use different forms of digital assessment. So it's not about institutions digitizing, it's about how they further their digitization. Mm. What do you think institutions should be thinking about now as they look to further digitize, if that's what they choose to do, further digitize their assessment practices? I think the priority in higher education at the moment is security, being sure that we can provide an absolutely secure online computer-based assessment experience for students. I need to make sure that people can't hack into the system, etc., that people can be assured of the security and confidentiality of their answers online, and that they can be assured of an appropriate online assessment, whether that's giving people a, an assessment that takes place over time of 12 to 24 hours, that's quite a common thing to do, kind of open book response, say, to a particular question. Um, and then also from there is, is ensuring that we have equity in technical expertise and equipment access. I think this is often forgotten. There's an assumption because we all, you know, well, most of us now have a mobile phone in our pocket that people think, oh, well, you know, everyone's online, everyone has access. It's, that isn't equity. It's about making sure that people have the right tools that they need in order to be able to show to the best of their ability, the knowledge that they've acquired for a subject over time. And that's a, a really, really important issue here within universities, ensuring that all students are able to access the right systems at the right time for the right amount of time and be able to show what they can do. In terms of the digital assessment space, something that institutions have been doing for many years and continue to enhance and evolve, what do you think institutions should be looking at on their long-term vision for digital assessment and their digital assessment practices? I think over the long term, we need to think about what the potential of artificial intelligence is in higher education spaces in assessment. We don't really know exactly where it might go, and we don't really know how that will impact how students prepare for assessments either going forward. So we have to think about that and really understand that aspect of it going forward. And I think the other issue that that raises, again, I come back to security. It's thinking about how do we keep data secure? How do we share data um, securely, et cetera? And how do we mitigate against um, you know, collapses in technology, hacking into systems? What do we do when that happens? Of course, that kind of thing happened with paper-based assessments too. You know, so it's just, again, being aware of those similar issues that are prevalent all the time in assessment so that people can feel that they trust the system. I'm going to ask some questions about digital assessment. And for the purpose of this, I mean a candidate taking their assessment using a device, a phone or a computer or whatever it may be, um, regardless of their location. They might be on campus, they might be at home, but it's the digital bit being their, the device they're using. What would you say are the inherent strengths of digital assessment over, if we might call it, analog or paper and pen assessment? Well, I think there's convenience, as you've just said. It gives you an, potentially a range of different options in which to work. For many people who might have some kind of learning difficulty as well, using a computer-based assessment can be more accessible to them. It might be a, a more comfortable experience or it might simply be an easier accessible experience to them. So there are those things that are very important in terms of the experience of the test taker. Um, but I also think practically for, um, for the markers, for example, things that are actually created on screen are easier to read, <laughs> they're easier to mark. You can automate some of that marking process, so you're taking some of that load from the markers as well. And you can also share information much more quickly you can give feedback almost instantly because you can create systems where, you know, an answer to something, say a multiple choice question, could have an immediate response or, or near immediate response. And um, I think those things are, are highly beneficial, particularly if you want to give people 
um, fast feedback. You want to give them some kind of way forward to work on something quickly. That's where this comes in, it's speed and efficiency. What do you think are the potential drawbacks or weaknesses of digital assessment compared, again, with paper and pen in the past? Well, there are some things we know from research, um, some research I did quite some years ago now um, that still holds um, that sometimes there are some candidates that when they type a response, they believe it to be more correct than if they had written it. And that's potentially, we think, down to the neatness effect of actually using a screen. You're not kind of scrolling, you might not have to cross anything out. Those things do impact test takers when they're actually interacting with the screen. There are also the obvious things such as people can be more fatigued, can be more tired in front of a screen. So equally, as I said before, screens can give people good or improved accessibility, but for others, it can be more difficult to interact with a screen for longer. So that can be a problem too. I think the most important thing here though is actually thinking about the design of the assessment. In the kind of assessment world, we talk about dumping a test behind glass. <laughs> and that's essentially what happened when we first went into computer-based assessments. People just took an old exam paper of some kind and then sort of retyped it and it became a computer-based assessment. And we found quite quickly that a lot of those assessments just didn't work properly in that way. We weren't assessing the right things. People weren't interacting with them or engaging with them correctly. You might find that lots of candidates got um, you know, answered incorrectly, you might get a great disparity in the actual grade outcomes or response outcomes you got from students. So it's really thinking about what does it need to look like on screen? How will someone interact with it? And this is an ongoing process. I mean, I think many people think, oh, you know, we know how to do that now. Well, we don't. You constantly come across really, really brilliant test developers who still develop items that don't function properly that are incorrect, that students can't answer, et cetera. And it just happens, it's a constant process of development. So, um, so yeah, those are some of the things that are, can be problematic. What would you say are the most common myths about digital assessment and what are your responses to those myths? I think um, one of the ones that more recently has come out of some research I've been doing um, into the use of artificial intelligence in marking is that students feel that somehow when they're undertaking the assessment itself, that they're being watched by the computer, that it is somehow interacting with them at the time, and also that it might have some kind of bias against them. So this is down to people not understanding the actual role that that technology has in the process and what it's doing, and also understanding the limitations of it. So that in itself is a very, very interesting, I think more global issue around how people understand AI and what it means in their lives. I think we all have different views on that. And I think, of course, there are limitations to what you can do on screen. There are certain things you cannot assess on screen and you must find other ways to do that. And you certainly can't opt out and say, well, we just won't assess that anymore. Um, <laughs> I think we have to be really careful that we don't um, go down that road. And I think there is this problem of, as I call it, this bad binary in assessment, that if something is good and right at that time, then everything else is wrong. I think that's a very dangerous precedent to set. And this is where we get ourselves into the problems. For example, that we had in 2020 when the pandemic hit, because we had no other options for any other kind of assessment or appraisal of students for GCSEs and A-levels in England at that time, we had nowhere to go because we didn't have the data because students hadn't sat their exams. In other countries around the world, students did other components, other coursework, et cetera. So their governments were able to create awards, were able to create outcomes. And I think one of the things I would hope that we would learn from that kind of experience is that by going just with one thing, we did, we did make a, a really problematic situation even worse. So I don't want us to go down there in the future. 